when we organized the Feminist Futures Symposium a few years ago at the museum in 2007, it actually received the largest attendance to all of our surprise of, I think, any educational event in the museum's history. And one thing that that indicated to us is that there's a huge audience and desire for this material out there. One of the things that comes up again and again in the book, I think, is the way in which when you bring in the work of women artists more regularly into a narrative of the collection that that always that changes how we see that there's you come up with different kinds of juxtapositions formal social political in all kinds of ways the work of these women artists absolutely i believe has profoundly changed the way that we see art history and so that can only it seems to me um, increase the more the more work we have on view um, and the more of a diverse kind of picture and narrative of the 20th century we present one of the questions that did come up as we were all getting interested in putting more of this work on view was whether or not we should do one major exhibition of women artists. And I think it seemed to us to be much more meaningful to actually simply integrate the work as part of the normal course of what we're doing, as part of the regular rotations in the permanent collection galleries, as part of the film program. I'm curating with a colleague in the print department a small show called Mind and Matter, Alternative, Alternative Abstractions, 1940 to Now which is work by about 12 artists who the museum has collected in depth for some time, a very international group. But Sarah Suzuki, my co-curator, and I decided not to actually mention in the introductory text that all the artists are women. So it'll be kind of an interesting experiment to see how audiences react to that um, and how long it takes them to kind of process that when they go into the gallery. But our philosophy was no one ever says that it's an all-male show, so we won't say it's all-female and just see what happens. I think we're highlighting um, sort of gender as a category because of the occasion of the book and because of the occasion of these collection installations. And gender, like race um, and other categories, is just one, one way of um, cutting through the collection, one way of reading a work of art, one re way of understanding an artist's work. Um, but I think at this point we don't think most of us in terms of male and female artists, it's just artists. The idea of incorporating feminism into one's practice as a writer or a curator is something that for me and for many of us I think is so internalized that we don't even think about it as a conscious strategy. But in fact, over time, the work gets done, that you begin with research, you begin with imaging, you look a little harder, you look a little deeper and a little wider. and of course you come up with new material and new priorities for oneself that then get integrated into one's bigger agenda, I think, as a curator. And to me, that's something that is ongoing work and is absolutely part of my work and I know Alex's work and for a lot of us here at the museum. And that, I guess, in terms of enacting something that is a kind of feminist practice or even an activist practice within an institution like MoMA, within any big institution, I think is really important work to do.